Welcome back, my name is Alex Mentinona and you are joining us for CSUN's Organic Chemistry Series. This is experiment number four, which is the Horner-Emmons reaction, uh, which is a variant of the classical Wittig reaction. Now the key difference between the two is that one uses an Eli, while the Horner-Emmons will use a Wittig reaction. Now this is a very stable uh, reaction that uses a two-phase system and it has a phase transfer catalyst, meaning the catalyst will actually take the active group and move it into the correct phase where it can then catalyze the reaction and then it will come back down, reestablish itself in the um, aqueous phase and rinse and repeat. So we have a phase transfer catalyst. Now your lab instructor will go into this in a little bit more detail, but that's kind of the biggest idea that you should get from this corner Emmons reaction. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what reaction uh, equipment we're going to need to use today. So let's look at the equipment that we're going to need today. Uh, we are going to be doing a water-cooled con condensation uh, and reflux, so what we're actually going to need to do is get our round bottom flask, a stir bar, I'm going to of course put that in there. We're going to have a water cooled condenser. Uh, we will need some latex tubing that connects to the water cooled condenser. Uh, for the isolation, we are going to need you know, uh, two Erlenmeyer flasks. You should probably have a beaker that you can uh, use, some, use for holding diethyl ether, a short stem funnel, a separatory funnel for separations a glass stirring rod, um, a few pasture pipettes, pasture pipette bulbs, a cat clip is pretty good, and of course uh, later in the experiment you'll need a TLC developing jar. And let's see the uh, reaction setup. Alright, so let's go ahead and take a look at our reaction setup. So first we have a round bottom flask. Now if you'll notice I already have my thermometer in my sand bath and it's clamped up to make sure it doesn't fall over. Now we're going to put all the reagents that we need, so I'm just going to simulate what we're going to have. We're going to have a little bit of an aqueous phase, so I'm going to have the aqueous phase in there, put some water, some DI water. We're also going to have some diethyl ether that's going to count as our organic phase. It may be a little bit different for your reaction because you actually have reagents in there, but again, we're just simulating a two-phase system. So we'll go ahead, add our second phase in there. Now we have two phases in our reaction uh, mixture. From there, we're going to go ahead and get our water-cooled condenser. We're going to attach it over the top, and we're going to connect the two of them with our little yellow cat clip. So we click, clip them together, and you'll notice I already have my clamp set up and ready to hold the entire apparatus together. All right, so we'll have that set up. And from there, we will go ahead and grab our latex tubing. We will insert the first one on the bottom nozzle. The second one should, of course, go to the input. So remember, bottom, you always want to go in. So that's going to go in the green nozzle. Sometimes that green nozzle it will be up towards your left, but uh, depending on what room you're working in, it might be in the back. Same thing that happens over here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and grab our latex tubing, insert it through, take the other set of latex, and make sure it is inside the drain in the back of your hood. We'll, we'll adjust these to make sure they're not touching the hot plate. Adjust them as you need. And then, of course, we can turn our water on. So if you'll notice, the water is going to fill, and we got a nice stream of water. And of course, we'll have it nice and slow to make sure that we don't, um, you know, waste too much water. We are in a drought. Okay, so we'll have that set up. It will reflux for an hour, and of course, you you want to make sure you have a good spin on there. You notice how I have a pretty decent spin, enough where you get a uh, vortex and then this will reflux for about an hour. Okay, so now that we have had our reaction reflux for an hour, let's go ahead and break it down and work on the isolation. 
So first things first, let's go ahead and move our thermometer out of the way. So if it's a little warm, we'll just move it. And again, we'll put the thermometer uh, on a paper towel to make sure that it's not touching the, the surface exactly or, or directly because that could, of course, cause a little, little bit of a problem. Now we'll take off our cat clip. We'll go ahead and move it to the side. And then we will take our water cooled condenser, remove it, making sure not to spill over our product, make sure it's nice and firm in there. And of course, we can go ahead and take out the, the latex tubing, and we'll just go ahead and dump the, the second one into the sink in the back. And if we turn this upside down, most of the water should just pour right out. All right. And then we can just leave it there until we're ready to finish cleaning it. Now, once we have all that moved out, out of our way, we'll go ahead and take our reaction flask, you know, if we have any sand, we'll clean it up. And then we'll go ahead and transfer it into our separatory funnel. And the way we're gonna do that is we're just gonna take our short stem funnel, put it in over the top. We will go ahead and take our glass stirring rod and we'll go ahead and decant it in. So we'll just pour along the top And this kind of helps to make sure you don't spill any of your liquid product. And then doing it nice and gently to avoid getting any of the solids in here. Now, what we can do to make sure we have all of our product transferred over is we'll do a few rinses. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my diethyl ether. I'm gonna go ahead and suck it up once or twice with a pipette. Now it's very important to do this, or if not, uh, you actually, a lot of times will see the solvent kind of squirt out on you. And if you squirt it up a few times, um, you can actually fill this with the vapor pressure and you can avoid that problem. So that's why whenever we're using an organic solvent, you wanna get few suctions before you transfer. So we'll get about you know one or two milliliters in there. We'll go ahead and swirl it around. Make sure we get as much of it as possible. And then we'll transfer. And we want to do this two times. So I'll go ahead and transfer over. That gets all the stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and skip the second transfer for the sake of this video, but you're, afterwards you're also gonna to wanna to do an aqueous phase transfer. So we'll get some water, and again, one or two milliliters. We'll squirt it on the inside. Give it a nice little swirl. Shake, shake it up. And then we'll go ahead and transfer that over again. And again, pouring along the side of your stirring rod will help you avoid spilling any liquid. All right. And now we have all of our liquid more or less transferred over. Now, if you look closely here, you will notice two phases uh, of your solution. So you have an aqueous phase and an organic phase. Now in this case, the aqueous phase is on the bottom because it is more dense than the organic phase on top. So for the isolation of this product, we do not want the aqueous phase. So what we'll do is simply we will get rid of that aqueous phase. Now in order to do that, we'll go ahead and just use a waste flask and transfer it out. So we'll go ahead and open the bottom of the stopcock and go ahead and slowly pour it out. And you'll notice the liquid level lowering and then we'll stop it, okay? So as soon as you get to the point where you have that little line there, we're gonna just get rid of all the, the aqueous phase and we're gonna be careful to try not to lose any of the organic phase, all right? Now we're gonna do that two more times. What we'll do is we'll get some water, we'll add it in there, a few milliliters, and usually when you add things in, you're gonna to wanna to mix them together. So we'll hold the top, we'll give it a few 
shakes up and down, and then we'll open the stopcock to release extra gas pressure. We'll close it, we'll flip it back upside down, and then we'll remove the cap, and then we'll go ahead and do another extraction. So we're extracting away the things that are stuck in the diethyl ether phase that we don't want. So, and they're more soluble in the aqueous phase. So we'll open the stopcock again at the bottom, and now we only have organic phase. Once you've done that two times, then we'll go ahead and collect our organic phase in an Erlenmeyer flask. So we'll go ahead and get an Erlenmeyer flask, add it in, and collect our organic phase. Okay, so now that we have our product, uh, what we actually have to do is dry the solution. So when we say dry, what we mean is remove all water from the liquid. So in order to do that, we're going to get some magnesium sulfate. We'll go ahead and take you know, a small scoop of this stuff. It's a, it's a very fine white powder. And we'll go ahead and add it into our solution. So usually about a teaspoon or less will do the job. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add it in. Now, the way to know if your solution is dry or not is, you know, if you mix this up, if you see it clumping up, that means it's not really dry. What you want is that it stays more or less as a powder and the solution itself stays clear. So usually what we want is, you know, it to not clump up so much at the at the bottom. All right. Let me uh, let me do uh, whatever. Can we just edit? Yeah, yeah. Okay. We'll just cut. Okay. All right. So you want to be like here. Come closer. Cool. That's perfect. Okay. Just continue. I'll edit it out. Okay. So we have our solution, and now that we've added our magnesium sulfate, uh, it should be dry, and you'll notice the, the liquid's more or less clear. So we want to transfer it over into a pre-weighed uh, Erlenmeyer flask that has a boiling chip. So if you notice, it's got a little boiling chip right there. So to transfer it effectively, we need to decant it. And to decant it, again, we're gonna go ahead and use our glass stirring rod and we want to pour along the rod and make sure the liquid gets transferred over. So I'm pouring along the rod and notice how I'm not spilling any even though we don't have like a, a true lip to this Erlenmeyer flask. Now we want to make sure everything is removed so we'll go ahead and get a little bit of diethyl ether. We'll go ahead and transfer it in here. And then once again, we'll give it a little stir, and then we'll decant along the rod and get the remaining product. All right. And that's how you transfer. And from there, you'll boil off your solvent, and you'll see if you have some pure crystals. So uh, let's go ahead and look at the TLC. Okay, so once you have your product, or at least uh, your product in your diethyl ether or other organic solvent, you'll go ahead and run a TLC plate on it. And the TLC plate, typically you're gonna run in one of these jars, you're gonna have a little bit of liquid. And then of course you put your TLC plate and you spot it just as the instructions tell you in your lab manual. If it is pure, then all you have to do is just transfer it over to your hot bath, heat the sucker up, and then you'll have your crystal product once all of the uh, ether has been uh, boiled off. But of course, you don't want to overheat it or you can decompose your product. Now, if it is impure, you're going to have to recrystallize it. And the reason why is the TLC plate, what it tells you is whether it's pure or not. So if it's not pure, you know, we don't want no scrubs. We want pure compounds. So what you're gonna have to do is do a recrystallization, and that's just simply dissolving it in hot ethanol and then recrystallizing it by cooling that hot ethanol down.
and then you can run a Hearst filtration and collect your products. And that should be things you, uh, you're familiar with from previous labs. If you have any questions, you know, uh, go ahead and ask your instructor. Okay, well, if you have any other questions, ask your instructor, uh, ask your lab instructor, or of course, contact them through email or office hours. Uh, that's it from us here at Cal State Northridge, and we hope you have a good day.